This is it. This is the first round. These are the running backs that you're going to decide who to take in those all-important first picks of your draft. We're going to break down not only where we stand consensus-wise, but how that compares to ADP. There are some bus candidates and some real breakout potential. So make sure you like this episode, subscribe, turn on the bell, turn on notifications, and enjoy the show. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Manscaped. Manscaped has just taken off in not only the USA, but Canada, the UK, across Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Singapore. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, the best grooming products on the planet. Manscaped.com, you're going to get 20% off for, with free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code FOOTBALLERS, Manscaped.com. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. That's what friends are for. <laughs> What's who sings that song? That's what friends are for. Does anybody know? No, no, nobody knows the answer to that age-old question. I mean, I sing it all the time, but I have no idea. Is that how you sing it? Yeah. That's what friends are for. Deanna Warwick, or Dion Warwick. Sorry, Miss Miss Red. <laughs> Diana Warwick. <laughs> Dion Warwick. Yes, uh, of course. That was pretty quick. Appreciate you, uh, Al. That's what I'm here for. Wednesday, August 11th. No, I don't have a normal voice. I apologize. This guy over here. I don't know what's going on. You just get on our back, man. We'll Greg yeah. Jennings this, is this thing. Is this a result of five days a week? Maybe. Or I look. I. Did uh, I come into training camp out of shape? I don't know what you're doing with your extracurricular activities. Uh, yelling at children. Mm, oh, yeah. yeah. Which that'll I do, do call an extracurricular activity. Yes. Yeah, it's either yelling at son's games or yelling at children, and the children are all we have left. <laughs> <laughs> Buy or sell on today's show. Some news to talk about. Some big news, potentially. Potentially, yeah. Top 10 running back rankings today. So uh, the ranking shows they're key. They're important. And I'm going to do my best with these top 10 running backs to ask you guys some eye-opening questions because a lot of these players, at this point in the offseason, there's been concessions made that they just belong where they are, right? You you have to take Christian McCaffrey over Dalvin Cook. and Sure. You know, uh, we'll go through the top ten today. And to be honest, there's not a lot of disparity in our rankings in terms of the three of us disagreeing on a top ten player. I mean, they're not identical, but – um, even if the even if the disparity in rankings don't exist between the three of us, I, I think that there's a lot of shading of the context of what we believe about a player and the probability of, of reaching their ceiling versus uh, busting. So it, it, it's interesting conversation. And obviously, for fantasy football, running backs are, you know, that's that's the centerpiece of your team. You, you look at the, the championship winners and, and in most of your home leagues, They've got the duo of power running backs. Honestly, the the biggest disparity we do the, we we have uh, managed to agree on a lot of our you know like the top five. The biggest dis disparity is us against ADP and us against consensus, and I mean, even just the shift of three spots. You know, like your fifth running back in the first round versus the eighth running back. That's a that's a very big disparity when you're talking about a first round pick. Are you saying it's us against the world, Mike? Because I can get behind that. I like it. Okay, it is. it is. All right. I'm glad, you're, glad you helped, you're with it. You helped with the show intro. Now it's us against the world. <laughs> the camaraderie is strong here. The wind beneath your wings. If oh, so, I'll bet. If somebody... <laughs> we're we're going to get all the ballad references in today. Oh, is that a Bet Midler? <laughs> that, oh. was a, that was a shout-out to my, my girl, Bet Midler. <laughs> shout-out. Right. That's right. Miss Miller. <laughs> if you're just coming back to the show 
We're five days a week. Talk about the UDK Plus because this is new this year. Absolutely. So the Ultimate Draft Kit is available right now. It is being updated all off season long. Uh, it, look, all the, the all the hits from last year are available. Our sleepers, our breakouts, our busts, our full projections, all of that stuff is there. All the, everything you've come to love from the UDK Plus this year, though, the UDK Plus is available. And that includes that's where you'll find the DFS pass if you were you know winning that quiche last year that thing still exists and new to the UDK Plus for this year the draft analyzer everyone loves after the draft how did I do validation I, validate me yes and that's how you do it with the draft analyzer you go you can import your team right from Sleeper or ESPN or you of course you can manually put it in as well maybe you're doing some mock drafts and you want to know what we think. Which one of the three of us likes that team the best? Give you an action plan. Your uh, who's your riskiest player? I mean, all of that stuff. It's it's a really, really not only a useful tool, but it's fun. It's it's a fun thing to you or use, not you. I received a tweet yesterday. Somebody has moved from having you as their favorite footballer. Oh, I did see this to me. Because I liked his team more in the draft analyzer. Well, so. guess what? He moved from my 105th favorite fan down to 211. What I did is I changed Ooh. some of the. I keep a full power rankings of all of, of your fan of, of the fans. Our, my favorite listeners. Sounds I've, like he's still pretty high. Well, he, yeah, he is. Because I, I was his. Because <laughs> I was his favorite for a long time. I changed the algorithm, and here's how it works now. If you get an A grade in the draft analyzer, I liked your team the most. If it's mm. B or below, it's one of the other guys. That's how it works. So <laughs> I see. Um, I, of course. It's a very complex <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. This week's buy or sell Falcons quarterback Matthew Ryan. Will he be in the top five in pass attempts for the fourth year in a row? Last year, he was first. The previous two years, he was third and third, respectively. We know that Matt Ryan is a volume machine. He takes down yardage like Jason takes down snacks. Oh, he's good at yardage. <laughs> but we have a change of system. We have a change of offensive philosophy. Arthur, Arthur Smith from the Tennessee Titans. He has come down. He was their O.C., and now he's in charge of the Atlanta Falcons, and we know what the M.O. was for the Tennessee Titans. It was play-action pass, a low volume of passing attempts, and run, run, run with Derrick Henry, the Yeti, out there taking souls away. But there is no soul stealer at the running back position for the Atlanta Falcons. So what does Arthur adapt and keep Matt Ryan at the top? Or what, how are we feeling about that, Jay? Yeah, I mean, uh, Matt Ryan, it, it, look, the the running game is not going to be great. Mike right? Davis. Mike Davis is actually a decent pass catcher, but he's no spring chicken. He's not going to be uh, lighting the field on fire. And even though Matt Ryan usually dangerous. struggles a little bit for fantasy, every new coordinator he gets the first year, he never is short on yardage. When I uh, look at this now, there is more competition, right? Like Dak Prescott's going to be up there. Yes. Uh, he was out last season. Um, th that being said, I have Dak Prescott as my number five, and I've got Matt Ryan this season as my number four total in yardage. I don't think their defense is great. I don't think they can run the ball. And Matt Ryan will, you know, look, inside the 20s, maybe he struggles. But between the 20s, he just racks up yards. Um, and I think he continues this season. So, yeah. You're a buy? I am a buy. I'm a sell. No. I don't think he's inside the top five this year. Um, Big change of philosophy then. Arthur Smith, 31st and 30th in pass attempts in Tennessee. And uh, top five is a high bar. So, I mean, I think it's easy for some other passers to climb into those ranks. And I think even Matt Ryan will be top eight, you know, somewhere in that range, top 10. But I don't want to underestimate losing Julio either. Sure. Like he is – the yardage volume wide receiver of our generation, and they don't have him anymore. So um, if he does it again, you're going to be happy with Kyle Pitts. 
If he does it again, you're going to have stolen Russell Gage in the late rounds. Um, but I don't think he will. I have him just inside the top five when I'm looking at my overall projections. And usually that's when I will sell if a guy is right on the fringe. But Matt Ryan is just I, – I get that the, the system is that Arthur wants to run is different, but I am going to give credit to Arthur Smith of formulating an incredible offense around the talent that he had. Wait, does he, he – are you saying he doesn't have Derrick Henry anymore? Yeah, yeah, we've been over this. It's Mike Davis oh, now. If, that's a difference. If you wanted to – like, I think it's worth saying if he wanted to just replicate what he had in Tennessee, they probably would have invested one of those high draft picks yes, 100%. on a running back. So they chose not to do that. Yes. you. Yeah, you would have tried – well, I mean, you, you can't take Najee at three overall, but maybe you try and trade down or – you try and get Javante in, in the second round. but So I, I agree with that. I think they're still going to throw, so I'm going to go with Matt Ryan ending up there uh, in the top five again. Is that where Deontay Foreman signed? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I was trying to think. They just added somebody, and I when he signed, I remember going, that, look, if he had it, Deontay Foreman does profile as a very similar runner to – or stylistically, I should say, as Derrick Henry. And not only that, but Just he was giant bruising man. He was there last year with Derrick Henry and that and is a Arthur good point. Smith. Probably why they brought him in. Yeah, that was buy or sell. Brought to you by our friends at Pristine Auction. Use the code Ballers at pristineauction.com. If you want some sports memorabilia, they'll give you ten dollars, just like a credit. They'll just give you ten dollars. Yeah. So that's here. You go. That's nice. Did you use the code Ballers? Great. Here's ten dollars. Yeah. A credit is what I got back on the uh, the canceled airfare from my uh, <laughs> yeah, well, recent of trip. Course, of course. I didn't get money back. I got a credit so I can fly on a bad airline again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something they do. They trap you. We'll bring you back. Yeah. All right, news time. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. The off season is a dangerous place. Like, if you're just running through the field of news, there are landmines everywhere. Yes. Like, if you are um, emotionally sensitive, your reactions to these day-to-day -day reports are going to – you're going to be all over the map emotionally. It's like the the, the big final scene in, in the war movie 1917 – you know, where, yes. where the, the yeah. guy is just sprinting. Left he's, to right across the field. He's running into other oh soldiers. There's explosions going off everywhere, knocking him over. Good luck. But just like fan, just like him in fantasy football, you got to keep getting up. you got to keep running through. Yeah, some of them made it through that field. Uh, Aaron Jones has been working on this side for the last two days. Matt LaFleur does not think it's a long-term issue. Beyond a week or two, any concerns? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I hate this time of year when we don't have to get truthful information. He's obviously dealt with soft tissue issues in the past, but it's been a while as of right now. Um, I'm not concerned. I'm not moving him in my rankings, but he, he's one of the few that you have to keep monitoring because he's so high in fantasy drafts. And we'll talk about him today on the running back rankings. Uh, John Harbaugh said Rashad Bateman out weeks, not months. That's great news. For he went if you saw the video of Rashad Bateman trying to leave the field, uh, where he just sl slowly went further down, went down to a stopped walking, went down to a knee, eventually Gra laid grabbed down. every muscle group. Yeah, there it, is. it looked rough. So this is every great news. Muscle group. Yes, he did. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that I would describe it as great news in the sense that he's missing camp, mi missing preseason, might not be ready for the start of the season. He's just not missing his whole rookie year. That's why uh, it's great news. Sure. It's Cup good. half full, Jason. Days, not weeks would have been better than weeks, not days. Yeah. Or weeks, Maybe not that months. would have been great. Hours, not days would have been better. Uh, and while we've been bringing I can play up, this game too. <laughs> while we've been bringing up, you know, the Lizard King, Sammy Watkins uh, being kind of the last man standing, the truth is Mark Andrews is, is the actual yes. – Last man standing, first target in that offense. So he he gives me – I have a little bit more confidence in redraft leagues in that fifth-round area. Here's a little bonus smoke fire challenge here. Chris Mortensen reporting this morning, Carson Wentz is trending to start week one after undergoing foot surgery at the beginning of August. Do you believe this? 
Well, g- given that the timeline was anywhere from now till the end of time, right? Was what they laid out for their expectations this on the fits injury within that timeline, five to twelve weeks. Yeah, look, uh, Chris Mortensen is a very respected reporter, so I'm going to take him at his word that this is really what he is hearing. Maybe Carson Wentz is not ready to go week one, but this is nice that it sounds like Carson Wentz will will avoid going on the pop list, avoid missing an automatic six weeks. They're going to hold on to him, and and maybe after you know by week three we have Carson Wentz, it, and it it brings me at least a little bit of hope for all of my off season. Uh, drafting of Michael Pittman I just don't know how this would be possible like how would you know this quick after the surgery that he's trending to be back on the shorter timeline like what it just the, I, the I, report was Quentin Nelson too right right it's like so both it's like, guys are looking great but it's like a week after the surgery yeah, that's true. they haven't tested anything you like I don't this is smoke to me it's hopeful smoke like, oh, look how beautiful that smoke is. It's it's great looking. I'm sure they're sending uh, you know, messages, but I don't I don't put stock in this. I'm that not, was a good smoke smoke signal yeah. joke. Is yeah, that it was, was a smoke signal joke. If um, I were a surgeon, this is what I would do. I would say, look, normal surgeons when they give this type of of, of a repair, it, it five to twelve the recovery weeks. is five to twelve weeks, and then when the the patient comes back in two weeks, it's like. I am the greatest surgeon alive. I have fantastic news for you. The ultimate under promise. Tell your friends. <laughs> um, I don't think this smoke is as positive right now. Darren Waller, missed. he's missed multiple days of practice. The quote from John Gruden, because there's no formal update. Oh. The quote is, oh. I, th- I think he's going to be okay. We're being very careful with him. He's I wor- think? He's working out very hard with the trainers. Johnny. I don't, I don't like that. You, yeah, I mean, you think he's going to be okay? When you talk about the different personality of coaches around the league and whether they're going to try to play the games and try to use everything to their advantage, um, they don't have to be honest. You know, some of these coaches I've, uh, you, you watch, and they're very forthright. It's basically the same as in season. They'll, they'll tell you exactly what the injury is, what the timeline is. That scares me. Like, I, I, would, I would not trust him. Like, if he knew that, Waller is going to be out the beginning of the season. He'd probably say, "Oh, I think he's going to be okay. We're just being careful with him." You know. So, I I will say this: if I was drafting today, I would, I would probably not take Waller in the third round. Really? I'm just there's how much, there's great players in the third, like that's, great that's phenomenal players in the third. Probably the best advice. Sure, but I'm but I I get it. There's great players in the third, but they aren't there are not. A bunch of elite tight ends, and it, sure, maybe you're saying. If I'm pass deciding and go to between Mark Calvin Andrews. Ridley, you know, and and Darren Waller right there in the third, why uh, not let this split the difference? Yeah, exactly. So, how many games would it take for? Let's say Waller is going to miss two games. Yeah, and, that's and enough. That's that enough would be that would be in. enough, not only because of total games missed, but just the fact that if you are injured. There is always a chance for re-aggravation. You know, if it turns out this was some kind of uh, bigger hamstring pull or something and he's back in week two, that doesn't mean he's, uh, you know, at at zero risk like uh, someone who's healthy right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to read too much into the quote. But if I wanted to read too much into the quote, it would be, (laughs) we think he's going to be okay. We're trying the trainer route right now. Hopefully we don't have to do something else. TJ Hawkinson, Lions tight end, banged up during Tuesday's practice, exited early, undisclosed injury, we'll keep you posted. Zach Moss, talked about him yesterday, suffered a hamstring injury. <laughs> oh, man. Whoops. That's, that's unfortunate. You had your time to shine. <laughs> um, it was yesterday. Sean McDermott helping us all out, saying the Bills are going to go one day at a time with the injury, which is really the only option he has. That's better than one week at a time. Okay. Am I right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is great news. <laughs> so camp string injury for Zach Moss. Oh. Uh, I believe that's it. Brooksy, do you got anything else? That's it for now. No other injuries during the news segment took place? Not that I know of. All right. Today's news and notes was brought to you, as always, by Sleeper. Sleeper is the largest dynasty platform out there. Customizable. Do exactly what you want to do with your league. Uh, that's why we love dynasty, as you can... I don't know. You can do what you want, and you're that's right. And you're playing all year long. And, my, and, my, and also, my team is awesome. 
Your, I, your team is ridiculously awesome. I was talking to Jason late last night. I'm sorry. We're, we're going to bring this up. I hate you. And people wonder, like, oh, are you guys friends? No, I hate I hate Andy. <laughs> now we're you not. Were, we're so no you were oh, we were we were great friends. Until last very night. thankful for him in my life. And then um, things. Sometimes have, you regret trades, and he really regrets our dynasty trade with the 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 terrible one that I that I implied that he is an awful dynasty manager after the trade happened. That's the one. And late last night, I'm trying to talk about mm. the company, some things that we got going on around here. I'm trying to really keep it on brand, you know, keep it on point. Mm -hmm. Keep the company going the right direction. Yeah. And Jason was clearly just tilting from the trade because he watched Hard Knocks. Oh, man, Zeke looks good. He does. He looks he thin. Look, he looks thin. He looks committed. Yeah, and, and I didn't like... Oh, man. Oh, who, who, he's on my team. I man. didn't like when he was on the screen. Um, I didn't like watching him because I was like, oh, man, so I what came, have I done? So I came back to my Slack and he said, can you please... <laughs> reverse the trade can we can we trade back yeah, he's like give me Zeke back trade backsies and I let him know that while I'm not willing to do that AJ Green is available oh thank you in our thank dynasty you, thank in you. our dynasty league I can uh, he's he's got several good games left that's I, right I just need to remember the my best kind of dynasty <laughs> days not weeks <laughs> <laughs> right yeah all right, before we get into our running back <laughs> rankings, want to thank our sponsors. And look, investing can be complicated, but whether you are a beginner or whether you've been investing for years, Wealthfront makes it soups easy. They have the right tools for every portfolio. They can create a portfolio of globally diversified, low-cost index funds personalized just for you in minutes. This is the easy route. Uh, it's, a where, great, it's a great platform. I mean, there's no manual trades, no picking your stocks or watching the market every day. You want to sleep well and just invest your money um, in, a, in a really smart system. They automatically handle all the investing based on preferences that you control. They also have a tax loss uh, harvesting, which can more than cover the low annual 0.25% advisory fee. Wealthfront is trusted with over $20 billion of assets, and you can get your first $5,000 managed for free by going to Wealthfront.com slash footballers. All you need is 500 bucks to get started. Grow your wealth the easy way and let Wealthfront do the work for you. To get the first $5,000 managed for free for life, go to Wealthfront.com slash footballers. That's W-E-A-L-T-H-F-R-O-N-T dot com slash footballers footballers to start growing your savings go to wealthfront.com slash footballers and get started today and before we jump into running back rankings i have a question for jason do you ever feel like you want to punch something oh yeah all the time pretty much last night watching <laughs> zeke i was like what if i die i need to punch something fight camp brings the boxing and kickboxing gym right into your home you can uh take out your bad trades right there with while getting fight fit camp, while getting fit imagine this Full body workout, Jason, after each and every one of your disappointing <laughs> endeavors into dynasty <laughs> trading. Uh, look, you'll actually look forward to these kind of workouts. I've always said it before, like sports and things that are not just, you know, following a video or doing something boring or running in place. Um, this is a freestanding punching bag, and it can take your hardest hits, and then you actually enjoy the workout. Mm -hmm. And it's made for beginners to experience boxers. So you don't have to go into it thinking, oh, I need to have been at a boxing gym for a year before I can do this workout. No. Uh, right in your home, new content delivered weekly, and then it goes from easy to advanced so that you can just uh, progress, enjoy yourself, and get in shape. You can pay for your fight camp over 24 months for less than the cost of a of, of like subscribing to a gym and get it right away. Plus, fight camp offers free shipping with a 30-day money-back guarantee. But join fightcamp.com slash footballers. To get free shipping on fight camp, go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers, joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Running bags. Top 10 running back rankings today. Top 10. The top men. <laughs> Half PPR rankings. That's our. These are our consensus ranks. If you want more detail beyond the podcast, all of the running back rankings, all of our projections, like the stat projections for each player, uh, and what? our tiers, 
UltimateDraftKit.com. Yeah, and, and there's a write-up on every single player, an outlook, short-term, long-term. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's where all of our thoughts and details go. All right. Um, Jason said it at the top. The running back position is the most valuable pick in fantasy football. Uh, there are seasons from some of the top men that feel like you have two players. I mean, Christian McCaffrey, he's our number one back. He is two players if he plays the way he most recently played. Alvin Kamara is in that category too, 80-plus receptions for four straight years. You're getting a running back, and you're getting a wide receiver. So um, that being said, if you whiff, that hurts the most because you're investing the highest draft capital on these players at the top. And frankly, three, at least three of the oh, top yeah. ten will get injured or not retain their value. So you've got a, at minimum, over the last decade, three of the top ten guys we talk about today aren't going to pan out either by, you know, chance, I would say, with the injuries or just not being the value we thought they were. So Christian McCaffrey comes in at number one. We all have him at number one. He's a good football player. He is a tremendous football player that, I mean, you can try. Maybe you want to ask the questions of, is Christian McCaffrey in the new system with Sam Darnold, will it really be more of the same of what you saw two years ago from Christian McCaffrey? We only saw him in three games, but in those three games, absolutely dominant, averaging you know about 25 opportunities per game. That's That's an unbelievable amount of usage for a running back. And he came through in a big way, scoring a rushing touchdown in in each of those three games, two in his first two. I mean, the I, I would I'd like to find a contrarian way to to look at Christian McCaffrey, but I don't think I can really have a honest conversation with myself of say like, is there a chance that Christian McCaffrey's work goes away? And it's it. I don't think that exists. No, they, 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 this regime is paying him a, a ton of money. We saw him used last year. The, the the contrarian argument is is one of two things, right? It's either, well, he spent all year last year injured, multiple injuries. Why are we drafting this guy this high? Uh, everybody could get injured. He has uh, shown us that he could stay healthy as well. He's had full, complete, dominant seasons. Yeah, before and, last year, extremely durable for a huge workload. Yeah, and the injuries he had last year in the timeline – is like he should actually be pretty fresh the, and super healthy. The camp reports, just to echo what you're saying, are that all the burst is back. There's been he's looked exceptional in camp, and they've reported he is the security blanket on any play that breaks down for Sam Darnold because that's what smart quarterbacks do. Cam Newton was not a check down quarterback. Then Christian McCaffrey yeah. arrived. It was like, oh, this guy will do a make me look real good. Um, if you look at over the last five years, the top targeted running backs, the number one top targeted running back was Christian McCaffrey in 2019. The number two was Christian McCaffrey in 2018. Uh, then you had James White, Saquon Barkley, David Johnson, and the number six was Christian McCaffrey. He is targeted like a wide receiver, and then he also gets the ball. He's two players in one, and he's the guy. The, the one worry is that, you know, instead of being at a, up at 140 targets, he's going to be 100 targets. Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's not a lot to pick apart there. Mike Davis, who was a valuable compliment backup, he's gone. And Cur I, Curtis Samuel was taking carries out of the backfield. He's gone. Absolutely. In, I mean, the depth chart is not – there's no one lurking in the shadows to try and take – like Reggie Bonifon, okay, fine, fine player, super Bonifon. Then they drafted Chuba Hubbard later in the draft. You're not worried about his position at being the number one. And I, to me, the success of Mike Davis on a team last – they weren't a great team no. last year, but the success of a journeyman running back uh, in this offense speaks even higher to me of Christian McCaffrey's potential. Yeah, I mean, even the year before his running back one dominant season, he was the RB3. So, yep. I mean, this is uh... – All right, next – yeah, let's move on. Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook is our consensus number two. Last year, he played 14 games, 312 carries, 1,557 yards, 16 touchdowns, 54 targets for another 44 uh, receptions, 361 and one. 
was the running back three but missed two games, had a groin injury, missed week six, and then week 17 didn't play. Workhorse back. Yep. Automatic role in the offense. Like, you know what's to, what to expect. Jason, you had fears about a change at offensive coordinator. Then they just they brought from, in his son. Coobs to Coobs. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, whatever. When you go coops to coops. You don't worry about. It. No, um, I'm I'm not worried about the scheme change. They're keeping the the running scheme the same. We know the talent of Dalvin Cook. We saw it last year. I've talked about how improved I believe the Minnesota Vikings defense is going to be, putting them in more, uh, you know, run heavy scripts. Um, and then if if it's not run heavy or if they're down, oh, oh, no, he can catch the ball. He had over 50 receptions. Uh, the knock on Dalvin Cook is and always has been the injury history. He His is far more prevalent um, and common in some of his, uh, like the shoulder uh, issue right. that he had in the past, has a historical, you know, nature of, of coming back up at some point in their career. So that's the word with Dalvin Cook. But again, the gap that I see between him and our number three in Alvin Kamara is massive. This is there's only two guys that are putting up points better than everyone on the ground, and then they also do a ton through the air. Um, so uh, you know, I I can't I cannot advise anyone to take someone else with the, one of the first two picks. Dalvin Cook deserves durability credit, in my opinion going 14 games back-to-back -back years when you have a 250 and then 312 workload compared to the kind of the sentiment around him. And you're right. I mean, like – Well, he, the, yeah, the first couple years he He's kind of got that – he's got that injury or oh, aura. He's got he's he's got LaShawn McCoy action going on on, on the reg where – He comes if, off and you think he's hurt and yeah, then he's when, like – When Dalvin Cook is your fantasy running back, you're watching – it's great. You, you watch him with joy, admiration, all these fantasy points – but at least once per game, he goes down to a season-ending injury. And if you were being pitched Alvin Cook in like a meeting, the top five performances, the weak winning ones, would be part of it, right? Like where he goes out there and the ceiling is always so high. You know, he has 13 top five performances over the last two years. Only Derrick Henry's beaten that. That's so, and his floor is also so high. Right, so. <laughs> he has one game last year where he wasn't a top twenty-four back. There one. is, I will say this: like the odds of Dalvin Cook beating Christian McCaffrey are high as well. Like yeah, they exist. They exist, and and they have the twenty-six ranked offensive line, and he did that last year. So, um, we can move on. Next up is uh, Jason. Just mentioned it. It's Alvin Kamara, running back for the New Orleans Saints. Um. I do consider him somebody that I think belongs in that top three. Like, you, I put oh, them together. Okay. I don't – even with – I think the cons, the concerns here for Super Camario, uh, it's it's around the offense. You have no uh, – Michael Thomas is going to miss some time. So, okay, now we're already lacking an elite offensive weapon at the at that wide receiver position. Drew Brees, Hall of Fame quarterback, is gone. So now the offenses will take a step back. If it's Taysom Hill, if it's Jameis Winston, and that still remains to be seen. I think that's that's the hesitation on Alvin Kamara. And Andy, you for you, those hesitations are just just fueling your fire for uh, like like. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, my fire is not fueled by problems. No. Well, I mean, I, like your your. Your stance of being so pro Camara, I, I mean, he's the offense. He is the off. The identity of the offense is no longer Drew Brees. The identity of the offense, at least to start the year, is not Michael Thomas. Right. The full identity of the offense it's is Alvin Adam Kamara. Troutman Got is it. Adam <laughs> Troutman. But then the backup, no, <laughs> Kamara is just he's automatic. Nobody's been more consistent in terms of just. It doesn't matter what happens around him. He was the number one running back last year. He played 15 games. Well, he did Christmas Day himself into. He can do a Christmas <laughs> Day. That's the point. And no, you're not going. Six. I forgot. It was six. It was six touchdowns. Six rushing touchdowns. Oh. That's a lot of touchdowns. And it should have been seven. So, but without that game, he still had double digits on the ground. 
So, no, you're not going to get 312 carries from Alvin Kamara. The way that you get that production comes differently in the passing game and with and with uh, touchdowns in the receiving game and on the ground. I just – I have I've taken a firmer – will not doubt this man's stance this offseason. And so he is, you know, firmly my three. Looks like he's your guys' three as well, but you have a tier break, and I, I'm – that tier wall is starting to disintegrate for me. Yeah, for, so let me explain why there's a, a, a tier wall, and this is – Also the number four offensive line, not the 26th ranked offensive line. Yeah, the, the, the offensive line is good. Alvin Kamara himself is phenomenal. Obviously, the number one running back last year, so we know that's in the range of outcomes. But the offense is a concern, and if you look at what happened, obviously they they didn't build the offense around Taysom last year for the four starts. You know, they didn't have the off season. They didn't have um, you know the setup. That was an injury causation that made them change on the fly, and that's not as easy. You saw the progression of getting Alvin Kamara more involved in the passing game um, after Taysom had played a few games. It's like, hey, pass the ball to Kamara, but that's an issue, right? Like, in the games without Taysom Hill, he averaged 8.9 targets a game. In the games with Taysom Hill, he averaged four. I don't care. Sure, but <laughs> goal line rushing touchdowns, if it's Taysom, can also be siphoned. If you lose a chunk of your passing work and you lose a chunk of your rushing touchdowns and the offense is worse, there's reasons that I could see it it not going as well. Whereas with Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook, it's injury. Well, Alvin Kamara could get injured. Everybody could get injured. So uh, there are just more variables here where I would not be comfortable taking Alvin Kamara over the other two. But you're good at 103. Yeah, he is my three. He is okay. he. If I'm at the three spot, that's my draft pick. Derrick Henry is four. Derrick Henry is large. Yes. Derrick Henry had, I think, more than double the amount of carries than Alvin Kamara had. Uh yes. It's got to be close. Yes. Three hundred and seventy-eight for two thousand twenty-seven yards and seventeen touchdowns. My goodness. Uh, he was the running back too. There were doubts about whether he could do this last off season, all of the, the warts of the runner only not pass catcher. Mm -hmm. It really hasn't mattered with Derrick Henry. Uh, he's also like Camara, the identity of the offense, uh, more than anybody else in football. I mean, the Tennessee Titans offense, you're either handing it to Derrick Henry or you're pretending to hand the ball to Derrick Henry. Right. So, um, I guess the question is, what happens in 2021? You can't do this forever. No. So no. at some point in time, it will stop. No, and what you can't do forever is have seasons of over 300 carries. Now, where Derrick Henry was eased into the NFL because when he was, you know, back when he was drafted, DeMarco Murray was there, and DeMarco Murray ended up being the lead back for, for quite some time before it became truly Derrick Henry's backfield. 2019, 303 attempts. Last year, 378 attempts. Derrick Henry, to me, it, like you're, we're talking about Andy with Kamara, it feels foolish to bet against Derrick Henry at this point, and we are clearly not. So we we have him as our our fourth ranked running back, but though that should be at least in the back of your mind is. We've seen running backs get that type of a workload historically, and it's they're the greatest running back in the league, greatest running back in the league, straight into burnt toast. Like it when it when it falls off with, with this type of a player, it's gone immediately. When you're like Sean Alexander, Larry Johnson, Priest Holmes, I think Derrick Henry still has some time, but long term, Derrick Henry, if he keeps getting this type of a workload, will. He, his body will break down eventually. Yeah, if 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 you're drafting not based on human beings and you're dra <laughs> just drafting based on math, based right. on history, yeah. based on probabilities, Derrick Henry should have a bad season by comparison to what he did last year and by comparison to being the fourth running back overall because historically speaking, when you have over 2,000 yards on the ground or 370 carries the next year, you are going to lose four or 500 yards. You are going to lose so many fantasy points. That happens 
literally, I, I think the only exception to that, um, you know, is a first ballot Hall of Famer from the 60s. Like, it, it doesn't happen. But we've said this before. Like, I don't draft early round running backs that don't catch the ball. Except Derrick Henry. He right. is an outlier. He is a different human being. And I am happy to draft Derrick Henry. I'm not going to doubt. It's kind of like you're saying, Andy, and you just don't doubt Alvin Kamara because he's super talented. And I'm not doubting Derrick Henry. We haven't seen anything saying that the wheels are going to fall off yet. Um, there will be game script problems in certain games. He is not a pass catcher. If they get down, they might not be able to run the ball the same way. And there is an offensive uh, coordinator change. So, so there's some variables and I'm not in love with them, but he's an outlier that I, I you know, bet against Derrick Henry at, at your own risk. Yeah. I mean, and just to throw the math out there, I mean, he had, he had more than double the carries of Alvin Kamara and finished behind him in fantasy. So you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you ran for 2000 yards. You had more touchdowns than Alvin Kamara on the ground. You had more than double the total carries. You finished behind him in fantasy. So when you talk about drafting pass catchers in this spot, if you want to bet against um, another 2,000 yard season, like, I mean, Chris Johnson had the 2,000 yard season. You know, that obviously doesn't last forever. It feels disrespectful to Henry to doubt him at all. But that's the difference maker between any of these picks is you're basically saying, what does probability tell me about this situation? He's much better against, like, he destroys bad run defenses. Mm -hmm. So if you look at predicting those week winning weeks where he's been better than everybody, including Dalvin Cook over the last two years at week winning weeks, they're going to come against those bottom 16 defenses. And he does have a new uh, offensive coordinator. So uh, Ezekiel Elliott. So here is our first really big disparity. Uh, all of us are pretty aligned on we're in on Zeke, but he is going at the back of the first as the running back eight. And he is our consensus running back five, which to me, that's a, a big gap. Yeah, uh, I have him at six. You guys have him at five. He was not here as recently as a couple weeks ago for me. He was much more seven, eight, nine. But Jonathan Taylor is behind him now in my rankings. Joe Mixon is behind him now in my rankings. So there was some hesitancy early on in the offseason with Zeke. Maybe I'm a sucker for, you know, seeing the physical specimen, looking like he's in the best shape of his life. I, it's just a matter of what is this offense going to be, and if Dak's healthy, I think you've got another elite year from Zeke. It's kind of a combination, right? Like, you know, and the targets. The, the, yeah, he's he's more involved in the passing game. Obviously, if you watched Hard Knocks, he's he's Dak Prescott's best friend. They were drafted together. It was this. such I I wasn't aware of this. Like I hadn't. It's just one of those things that you're like, oh, of course, I didn't put this together, but drafted the same year. Their friendship is is delightful. Yeah, no, it it is wonderful, and obviously he's you know the uh, one of the faces of the franchise, so the, he's going to get the workload. The question is just was the Zeke we saw last year with all the, the fumbles beginning and of the end, not just the fumbles, but the lack of breakaway runs. The you know look you've, on a on a per rushing attempt, uh, Tony Pollard looked like the better running back, and and so you start to wonder: Is this the beginning of the end? You, Todd Gurley looked great; he was the best running back in the world. And then you started showed signs slowing down, and then it's over. And so you don't want to be caught holding the bag with Zeke, um, but you're not going to be because it's not over for him. Uh, last 26. year, if you remember, you know he was one of the first players that got COVID, was kind of out of camp for a little while, looked out of shape. Then they lost their quarterback. Then they lost three of the best offensive linemen in the league. It wasn't that great. But you know, when you look at a player who has looked out of shape physically and then played like he's out of shape, and then you look and you go, oh, man, he got his act together. He is coming in fit. He's coming in on fire. I, I The offensive line is back. I, I think Zeke, um, you know, I would have a hard time. Like, I have Derrick Henry at four. But if I'm at four in a I draft, I'm probably taking Zeke ahead of Derrick Henry because of the pass catching work. I was thinking about that the whole time we were talking about Derrick Henry, knowing that Zeke is coming up. The, you know, you the targets know? are going to be there. And the, the offensive line, they had a bunch of offensive line injuries last year. So not only was it the – the bad quarterback play it was the offensive line play that Zeke is not used to running behind. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to still be in on Zeke. His The first five games of last year, 108 target pace, 81 reception pace. That's 
Alvin Kamara's reception totals. Yeah, he yeah. was he was the running back three while Dak was healthy. So uh, obviously, this was not uh, chicken egg in reverse situation here. Uh, Zeke was climbing up to the point where I went and pursued him in our dynasty league mm -hmm. to try to make a run. Now this is not a long term dynasty pickup; it's a short term dynasty pickup. But the belief is, hey, this is going to be a nice year for Ezekiel Elliott. Um. So all, all signs point to that. It was nice seeing the receiving work in, in hard knocks. I, I won't lie. Aaron Jones at six. I've got him at five, so I do have Aaron Jones a spot ahead of Zeke. Jason mm -hmm. and Mike have him at six. Last year, nine touchdowns on the ground. Had another 47. Had 47 receptions, 355 and two. Um, finished at RB5. Missed a couple games. Great player, great workload, great offense, great team, great quarterback. Great, He's great role in the in the offense. Great disrespect. I mean, there's a lot. There's a there's a great amount of disrespect because um, nobody wants to give him a crown in the upper echelon of the running back fantasy rankings. They really don't, and that's weird because he's literally been a top five fantasy running back. The last two years in a row, he was the running back two, two years ago. He was running back five last year. Now you lose Jamal Williams. Like, A.J. Dillon obviously is going to get more involved, but A.J. Dillon was there last year in his rookie season. They subtracted Jamal Williams, who got a lot of the two-minute drills, got a lot of the passing work that A.J. Dillon does not project to get. I mean, Aaron Jones should really have a phenomenal season. You know that... Aaron Rodgers is coming to, you know, on, he, he is a man on a mission to prove green to Green Bay and the rest of the league. Like, I'm the best. I'm the, the offense is going to score. A I'm going to win a championship and show you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and then demand to be traded in the offseason. I, I don't understand what there is to not love about Aaron Jones outside of the current missing practices sure. right now, which I expect that'll be. He's the RB nine in, yeah. the, in the community. I I, I would underrated. Give me the eighth draft pick then. Um. Okay, so uh, seven and eight are Saquon Barkley and Nick Chubb, and I bring them up together because we've talked a lot on the show about Saquon. Uh, activated from the PUP, tore, tore the ACL in week two. Had to wait to have surgery. This we didn't get to see him with Joe Judge in this offense. There are plenty of question marks about what. Daniel Jones's future looks like in New York. And I think for some people, and I, I'm asking myself, am I this person? He's kind of off the board because of question marks. It's similar to the question or the situation Jason brought up with Ridley and Waller, where if you have doubt, why not take the player you know is going to play? I bring up Chubb in the same conversation because, you know, we have Saquon seven, Chubb eight, but if, if it was today, Mike, if you're sitting there right. with the seventh pick in the draft and Chubb and Barkley are both on the board, are you looking for more ceiling from Barkley than Chubb or are you just taking the sure thing because you know you know, Chubb just got paid, you know what the offense is? That uh, the, the rankings of Nick Chubb versus Saquon Barkley has been the one of the most difficult situations for me of uh, – trying to figure out where I, I truly stand because I I love Nick Chubb. I mean, all the arguments you, you can say about Derrick Henry, I mean, of, uh, of you know, he's not a pass catcher. Nick Chubb is not the pass catcher. He has uh, a prolific backup on the team that's going to take work, Kareem Hunt. But to me, Nick Chubb is an outlier. Clo he's not Derrick Henry, but he is on the outlier scale far closer to Derrick Henry then I think that the the general public believes it is my belief in in Nick Chubb. So, Jason, what about uh, you? Weighing, weighing that in versus the pass catching upside of Saquon Barkley is very difficult. Uh, yeah, I mean, if <laughs> I know it's it's not the exact question, but if I have to make the decision uh, at this spot, it's Austin Eckler. But um, <laughs> okay, okay, if I have to own, you know, there's only two guys left, and it's Chubb mm -hmm. and it's Barkley. I I would. I would go with Chubb because of the injury risk right now, not knowing um, whether or not Saquon's going to be there. But he's not 
is by no means off my board. I mean, you, you get to a tier of running backs where I would rather wait a couple weeks and, and know, knowing that I'm going to probably get a slow start um, for the potential upside of Saquon. But I don't think that the upside, and this is where I, I caution people listening, and I, I talked about this on the early offseason bust show, um, which Saquon was, was my bust, that I don't think he is – the rookie year Saquon, the Eli Manning Saquon of the past that is a well over 100 target running back. I, I, I don't think that, you know, if he comes back and is on fire, I don't think he's a top three guy. I don't. Not really? In the, no, okay. not, not in this offense. I think he's, you know, in that in that four, five, six range after the Camaras and the Cooks and the Christian McCaffreys. Because That's such good information to have. Because everybody has been, it's it's been A or B. It's like if healthy, he equals old old Saquon. Right, and I don't think that that is. I don't think that's true. We looked at that. If you go back to the the, you know, I don't want to regurgitate all the information. There's a lot of stats on that show talking about what the truth of his second season uh, really was. What the truth of him without Eli Manning was in healthy games where he was good. I'm not saying he was bad, but he was not what he was with Eli Manning and, and in that rookie season from a fantasy perspective. He's been a top two back in Dynasty ADP for four straight years. Are you? Is he a top two back for you? Are I will you, say this. In Dynasty, he is still super young. Um, is he top two? No, I, I don't think so. I would still have both. Uh, I, I, I would have Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook ahead of him. Okay. So we talked about Chubb. He comes in at eight. Mike, you're the highest on Nick Chubb. Mm -hmm. um, you have him at his ADP, which is RB7, seventh pick in the draft. Just got the bag. I mean, having Kareem Hunt there is not – it's not a direct threat. Correct. To Nick Chubb in any way, shape, or form. What it is is it's very convenient for the Browns because they don't have to stretch Chubb out. They don't have to close games out with Nick Chubb. That is a frustrating thing if you want to see somebody um, make the leap into the top three or four at the position, and that seems very unlikely with Kareem Hunt there. I, I think it is possible for for Nick Chubb. I mean, Best he, offensive line in football. Yeah, the offensive line is great. The touchdown upside is – tremendous and you look at what he did last year you know the running back nine we highlighted that but 190 attempts and he officially missed four games but he really missed five because week four against Dallas when he left the game he had already he had six attempts he had played in 19 percent of the snaps and he was already dominating like he was six for 43 in that game Nick Chubb is not just uh, a grinder he is an elite runner. He led the NFL in yards after contact. He is the highest uh, rated elusive running back per pro football focus by a wide margin. He is not just a, a – where like Clyde Edwards a lair uh, for the for the Kansas City Chiefs. He can get you chunks. Like he can, he can rip off a 15-yard run. He can rip off several of those. But Nick Chubb can give you that and then – he can he can house it at 80 yards on any given play. He has that 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 uh, strength and that speed to be that guy. So I I believe that Nick Chubb is a great pick at his ADP and in the range of outcomes to me is an outlier touchdown season where he comes in and he scores Derrick Henry levels of touchdowns and he's a top three guy. Austin Eckler at nine. Now Mike, I know you're not really a big supporter of Austin Eckler. <sighs> but we have him at nine. Jason has him at seven. Darn right. Jason's awesome. Ex awesome. Excellent. Jason's trying to steal my thunder. Yesterday, Mike was just bemoaning the fact that somehow he's lower on Eckler than Jason is. But Jason had to go to outlandish above Saquon levels with Eckler to disturb Mike. Which I love. I, I love that he has him ranked that high. He does seem. He's great. I think I think the headline here for fantasy players is when you hear a name like this that's not normally in the top ten necessarily had the injuries last year, um, only played 10 games. It, it's validation, and it's also saying, like, the path is clear. Because for Eckler, I don't – I mean, what's what goes wrong for Austin Eckler in this offense? He has the role, and he's the pass catcher. 
Are and, they going to – is he going to get less work in the running game than you expect? No, I don't think he's going to get less running. I mean, I don't expect him to have 275 carries. That, that's what I love about Austin Eckler is that – when I look at statting, less, less production than you'd hope. It, what when I look at <laughs> statting him out and where he ends so high is that it comes in a way. It comes in the past game. It's very Alvin Kamara esque. He's not going to get this workload that yeah, I'm relying get, on. He won't get the Kamara goal line level of carries. Though. Well, now here's the thing, though. I'm curious about that. So I have him not scoring a bunch of touchdowns because historically he has not scored a bunch of touchdowns. He's not been a goal line back, but he has literal no competition. I mean, the Joshua Kelly rookie experiment was a failure. Uh, Justin Jackson's ju his current backup. Yeah, and that's not going to be a goal line back. I, I think that the – so my point is this. With what about him having Larry more, Roundtree the third? Right. With him having more the than round, 100 – round of touchdown. More than 100 targets, <laughs> pretty much guaranteed. He was on pace with, with uh, Herbert – for 120 targets last year. So 100 targets is pretty much a guarantee for me. If he has that level in the passing game with his uh, capabilities, he's going to be a top 10 back. That's just unless he gets top injured. Back. But can he be a top five back? Well, this is the point. It, it is not a 0% chance that he becomes a goal line back, that he becomes the inside the five back because he's their best option for inside the five Running back. I mean, he's the best guy to be on the field. Last year, he had two carries inside the five all season. So, yeah, he didn't score touchdowns, but it's a new offensive coordinator. He is the guy. He's going into the season as the guy. I think that his his floor is just so high. He's, he's game script proof. If you're in any kind of PPR or half PPR league, he's absolutely outstanding. And my point is, I believe his ceiling is higher than we think it is because – I, I, with this offense that I I think we all say is going to be good with Justin Herbert in year two, if he gets 10 touchdowns, I won't be shocked. Uh, like, sure. that's not what I'm projecting him for. My number seven ranking does not have him, you know, scoring 10 times on the ground. I've got him with five rushing touchdowns. Um, so, I, but but I think he I think he could hop up into the Alvin Kamara type of fantasy finish. All right, let's close it out with number 10. Jonathan Taylor, Colts running back. Maybe some good news this morning if Carson Wentz can oh, get back out there sooner. Real quick, sorry. The, and Quentin Nelson. I don't know if we had mentioned it, but the best part of Austin Eckler is he's going in the second round, and he can be your RB2. So you can open your draft with it, by our projections with two top ten running backs. Could you? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, I, I've, I've seen like an Aaron the, Jones. If you're, if, you're the, if you're close to the turn. Okay. Yeah, if you grab an Aaron Jones-Austin-Eckler combo. Yeah, yeah it oof, can happen. I'd be happy with that. Um, or Jonathan Taylor-Austin-Eckler because Taylor is now going more in that one-two turn range. He is the RB6 by ADP. That has changed, though, with the injuries. Um, I have him at eight, Mike at 11, Jason at 13. Uh, at one point in the offseason, early in the offseason, I had him at four. Um, does the news of a hopeful return for Carson Wentz and Quentin Nelson make you want to bump him up maybe just a spot or two? No, I'm comfortable okay. with him at eight. I Look, Naeem Hines and J.D. McKissick, they, they fro-yo together. Those guys hang out. They exist to give you eye rolls when you draft the so number they, one in the room. They share the, the frozen yogurt, and then they they cackle like, see how many touches I stole? <laughs> it's just hard to look at Naeem Hines. Why are they goblins? <laughs> oh, they're, I mean, they're goblins because they're gobbling up all his targets. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, both players, here's what I know. Like, <laughs> That's exactly what he says every time. He runs out as, on the field on third down he, when he passes Jonathan as Taylor. As he's high-fiving him, yes. they, they switch to like, get in there. But <laughs> also, my voice could not do a goblin right now. But. The more I looked at this, the more I think about it, the more I, you know, go back and listen to Frank Reich and the way he talks about Naeem Hines. Like, Naeem Hines is going to exist to stop the pass catching prowess of Jonathan Taylor reaching maturity. That's the real truth. This is the same offense, this is the same head coach, this is a run, running back with 60 plus receptions. 
And I think that's the gap. That's the gap from four to eight to me is Jonathan Taylor has to reach a, a level that's higher than 30, 40 targets. And I just don't have enough confidence to project that. Yeah, it, it is tough. Uh, last season, and you guys with, are lower than me. With so. check down Philip Rivers, he still only had 41 targets. Now he was incredible with 36 receptions on those 41 and, mm -hmm. and did great work. And I think they should utilize him more going into his sophomore year. I mean, it, I, I think it would be a mistake to not take this player who really broke out for your team the second half of the year and say, let's let's not get him more involved in the passing game. I think they will try to. Um, the problem is he's not going to be a 50 reception player. He's not going to be getting uh, Dalvin Cook levels. And while his talent and athleticism is off the charts, and I love him. I've, I've really yo-yoed with him in my rankings, uh, especially through this Quentin Nelson, um, Carson Wentz news. He is a guy that I want on my teams because I love watching him play. I love watching him get up to 22 miles an hour on a breakaway right. touchdown run. Fastest player clocked in the league last year. He has huge potential, and I don't, I don't fault anyone for taking their shot on him, but the odds are that he is not involved enough in the passing game to be one of those top five running backs. If that changes, there's also going to be there's going to be some games that you just kind of get frustrated. I mean, last year they worked in um, who who was it? Why my his name's escaping me. After Matt got hurt, um, oh goodness, maybe Jordan Wilkins. Thank Wilkins, you. thank yes. you, thank you, Brooks. Uh, you know they worked him into the offense. Mac is back this year on a de on a one year deal. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how he there's does. going to be some eye rolling that takes place between Hines. Hines would come in get some at the line. eight yard line yeah. and you'd be like you know what is going on here uh excuse me and did taylor you, taylor did still you know had jonathan taylor's 220 pounds please put him in well it's the same thing where mike's saying did you know that antonio gibson was a really good pass catcher yeah i mean he was a wide receiver and then all of a sudden mckissick is number two in the league in receptions the and to be objectively fair in the the argument uh that is often made against david montgomery where Montgomery's second half when he broke out and he won people leagues it was against atrocious rushing defenses and let's look at what Jonathan Taylor did the first half of the year yeah he was he was good like he was he was, you were happy you, you picked him and you were happy that he was in your fantasy lineup but when Jonathan Taylor turned into the league winning running back those final five weeks that was against Houston Las Vegas Houston Jacksonville there was he did beat up on Pittsburgh who was a solid defense but four of those five games were against absolute bottom dwelling rushing defenses last year so that no question so that just I'm I'm not I'm still in on Jonathan Taylor old Johnny T here but I want to at least try and be objectively fair to that argument for Montgomery out of these top 10 running backs in tomorrow's show we'll get into the running back rankings 11 through 20 to 25 somewhere around there um, who are you most afraid of busting in Saquon the top Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry. I think it's Saquon for me. Derrick Henry would be my other one. Um, next year Saquon Barkley would be my other one. <laughs> next year, <laughs> who like are we? We're aligned. Who are we talking about next year as a top tier RB? Najee Harris. <laughs> um, uh, I mean Jonathan Taylor. If he, you know. I, I think that's the guy who could be in that one, too, if we're wrong and he gets more involved in the passing game, or if he just straight up dominates people's faces, which is I think he's capable of. All right. Well, tomorrow we'll get to talk about a number of other interesting names, Joe Mixon included, somebody that I hope can enter that upper echelon. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm sure there'll be more disparity in our rankings tomorrow as well. Anything else for us, Brooks? No, sir. Any really expensive purchases recently? It's that's private. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the it's, yacht oh. is private. He doesn't let people on yacht. the yacht. We got a HIPAA violation. Money, money, <laughs> money. All right, that'll do it for today's episode. <laughs> for Naeem Hines, J.D. McKissick, Jason Moore, <laughs> Mike Wright, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti. And myself, Andy Holloway. Farewell. We'll talk to you tomorrow. See you then. Goodbye. Thank 
you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.